when looking at the Force users in the game, we took a step back and decided what, what would we want to play and what would the fan want to play. We want to give players the opportunity to be the heroic Jedi like Luke Skywalker or the darker, more avenging type of Jedi like his father Anakin. And that's a lot of fun actually to create those types of moral choices in the game where players are allowed to express themselves in those terms. The reality is there are so many different types of Jedi. The Jedi are not all alike. In, in Knights of the Old Republic you were very much, um, you were an outsider. You were somebody who had lived, lived their life and discovered that they were force sensitive and then were, were brought into the Jedi Order on Dantooine. In the Old Republic where you know you, you were a Jedi to begin with, you've always been a Jedi. You're a part of that culture. You were raised according to the codes of honor. You've lived in that mindset all your life. My favorite thing about the look of the Jedi ship is kind of the rounded, sleek, uh, red, almost hot rod look that they've got going. It looks like a very fast ship, but also if something is there to interfere with your treaty making or anything, it's got to have some big guns to fend that off as well. We felt it was really important that every Jedi in the game has a lightsaber and wields it. You actually see the blades making contact, you see the sparks flying, you get that Star Wars feel of the lightsabers clashing. When, when two lightsabers collide, or look like they collide, that's all based on the animation. Two animations sync up and we actually spawn an effect off of the lightsaber on that specific frame in the animation to where it looks as if the two sabers are clashing together. We'll call it kind of a flash effect and flare out the lightsabers a little bit, make it look like they've contacted each other. Their lightsabers are more rounded and, uh, and oddly enough, more low-tech, kind of more the 70s Star Wars-y look, uh, which we had a lot of fun incorporating into, into the look throughout. When we're doing the consular at night, or any class, we look at their colors. When we looked at the Jedi, these are the good guys, so we went with the earth tones. We took these, these robed monk ideas and then we added to them throughout their play. So these guys look anywhere from you know, armored, robed monk guys all the way up into uh, people that might look like they're from in the Senate. The strategy behind creating two Jedi classes is we knew Jedi were going to be very popular and we wanted to make sure there were a lot of options for all the people who would sort of gravitate towards the Jedi. So we took sort of the two most iconic things, the lightsaber and the force powers, and built a class sort of around each of those ideas. And that became the knight and the consular. The Jedi Knight is all about high adventure and action and, you know, jumping right to the forefront of the battle and, and leading troops on the, the last desperate charge to save a world. The Jedi Knight's got a wide array of different melee attacks for different situations. So he'll have different saber moves he uses when he's, say, fighting one tough target versus a bunch of smaller enemies. Um, and then these attacks, some of them will sort of build up his force focus and then other ones will spend it. So he's always got that sort of ebb and flow of building up to his big, strong attacks. If the Jedi Knight's role is to defend the Republic, the Consular's role is to be behind the scenes and to mend it and bring it back together. Diplomacy is a large part of the Consular's storyline, and you know you can't go into details, but you know there are times when you actually have to grab people and make them listen to you. The Jedi Consular has actually a wide array of playstyles. Uh, if you like playing the sneaky rogue. We have a build there for you. If you like supporting your allies and controlling enemies, we have a role there. And we also have a straight up damage role where you're just smashing things with telekinetics. We've actually also built it so that if you do go down the healing route, your companion becomes more powerful as you level up as a healer. I like to have us think of the, as their powers as being kind of like a clean or focused energy, whereas their effects are going to be kind of like the cooler tones, kind of the greens and blues, and also pretty symmetrical. A lot of the effects, I like to have them look as if they're coming from the character. They're not really making magic between their hands and casting that. You can play through the Jedi Knight and get the great, big, thrilling action-adventure movie and play that all the way through, and then you can turn around and you can start a Jedi Consular character and get an entirely new story. Just as exciting, but about all new things. If you want to get sort of the complete Jedi experience from Tor, you'd need to go through sort of, you know, both classes and experience different pieces of the puzzle. If you've been playing through sort of classes on the same side and then go through and replay them again, you'll do it with a much greater understanding. You may make some choices differently.